Hey there, it's CJ Willie and I'm cracking a pack today. I'm back with pack number 35 in my 1988 Tops Mini Leaders box. I'm trying to see how many packs I have to crack to get all 77 cards in the complete set. I've included the link to the preview video in the description below, which gives a little explanation on the set and the highlights of what I could pull in cracking these packs. Since each pack only has two cards, I guess the category or categories that the player led their league in, then I'll flip the card over and see how right I was or how very bad my memory was of the 1987 MLB season. I'm down to two packs. This is the last two. I'm trying to get set number three. So I'm seven cards away. I'm gonna mark off 35 with 14 cards possible. So hopefully I can get those last seven cards and complete, I guess my goal of getting three complete sets out of one box. Okay, let's get to cracking this pack. Dan, please sack. Yes, okay, so that's a triplicate I need. So I'm gonna at least get three or four triplicates I need, just by the way the packs are distributed. It seems like they've come in groups of three or four. So we'll see, we'll see how well I can do. Oh, Vince Coleman's a card I need as well. So get rid of my Spring Fever Baseball, and let's get started. Phil Bradley is one of the triplicates I need. Okay, down to six cards. Uh, Bradley was um, a mainstay of the Mariners lineup in the early 80s. Uh, he didn't play with them when they had a lot of success uh, after Ken Griffey Jr. arrived in town. So it was mainly the Phil Bradley, Alvin Davis, and Mark Langston show. Um, they looked like they were going to get better with Harold Reynolds coming up and then Griffey Jr. But it still took them until 1995, I believe, um, to, to you know get into the playoffs. Bradley was a good hitter. Um, good on base, good batting average, doubles sort of guy. Had a little bit of pop in his bat. Eventually went to the Phillies and Orioles. I believe in 87 he was a league leader in, um, I want to say, batting average and doubles. So doubles he was third with 38, second in triples with 10, sixth in stolen bases with 40, seventh in walks, tenth in hits, and hit 297. So, okay player. I think he made an all-star team or two. Lee Smith is another triplicate we need, so we're down to five cards. Uh, this has turned out to be pretty awesome. Um, Lee Smith, dominant closer for a number of years. Uh, I believe his first league in the, the first year in the league was 1981, um, and he lasted almost until 2000. I think the last year he pitched was 98 or 99. Uh, was a stopper with the Cubs, the Red Sox, the Cardinals. Uh, later on in the career, kind of was a setup guy. Um, made it into the Hall of Fame. And I think it was well deserved. Lee Smith, Bruce Shooter, Raleigh Fingers kind of developed the evolution of the pit, of the closer. Uh, they were the first closers that would go multiple innings as well. It wasn't uncommon for Smith, Suter, or, or, or Fingers to go come in in the seventh and go seventh, eighth, and ninth for the save versus the one inning or one out saver of today. Uh, Smith was a league leader in saves. I think I can't remember if he led the league in saves. I don't think he was. I think he was second in saves. Yeah, he was second with 36 saves, and then third in games finished with 55. Next up is Alan Trammell, recent inductee to the Hall of Famer, and another triplicate we need. So now we're down to four more triplicates. Um, Trammell, I think, should have got into the Hall of Fame based upon the writer's ballot and not the Veterans Committee. Uh, Trammell, unfortunately, his career paralleled that of Cal Ripken Jr. Um, Cal Ripken Jr. was a lot more famous. Uh, Trammell ended his career just as the rise of the shortstop with power, Alex Rodriguez, uh, Nomar Garcia Para, you know. Um, I think he's very comparable to Barry Larkin, uh, similar kind of batting ability. Trammell was a steady defender, played shortstop until the end of his career. Uh, had an MVP season in 1987. Uh, I don't think he was a league leader in home runs, but I know he's a league leader in batting average, uh, RBI double. Uh, batting average with third, hits in third, on base percentage fifth, game winning RBIs fifth, and runs fifth. Uh, didn't quite get there for doubles and home runs, but had an all-star caliber year. Barely lost out to George Bell and the MVP voting. Uh, Dan Plesak is another card that we need. So we're down to three cards. Looks like Jeff Reardon, Vince Coleman, and Rick Rochelle. Um, Dan Plesak um, came up with the Brewers as a closer, spent the first three or four years of his career as a closer, and then the remainder of his clear career as a lefty specialist. Um, Plesak, I think, in the American League uh, was fourth in saves. 
Uh, currently, he is an MLB studio analyst. So, yeah, fourth in saves with 23, sixth in games finished with 47. Next up is Vince Coleman. So, we are two cards away from getting our triplicate set. It's pretty exciting. Uh, Vince Coleman is one of my favorite Cardinals, a uh, speedy guy. His first five years in the league, he led the National League in steals and racked up over 500 stolen bases, the quickest to get 500 steals in their career, I believe. Um, Vince Coleman, I like to think if he didn't break his leg, getting caught by the fastest artificial tarp covering in Major League Baseball in 1985, the Cardinals go on to win the World Series. Fortunately, they lost to the Royals in seven games. Uh, Vince Coleman, after he left the Cardinals and uh, signed as a free agent in 1991 with the Mets, his career went way downhill. Um, he had a few attitude problems um, and pulled some weird firecracker shenanigans in New York. If you want to read up on that story, check it out. Uh, Vince Coleman was a league leader in stills. He was first in stills in 109. I should have remembered that he was second in runs with 121 and fourth with 180 hits. Fifth in triples with 10. Speedy, speedy guy. Don Mattingly is our next card. It's a, it's a quadruplicate. So it doesn't look like I'll get my last two cards yet. Jeff Reardon and Rick Rochelle. Um, so uh, I'll have to wait till pack 36 to complete my third set. Uh, Don Mattingly, fantastic player. Affectionately known as Donnie Baseball. 87 was another great year for uh, Mattingly. Eventually, toward the end of the 80s and the start of the 90s, uh, injuries plagued him. But in the mid, uh, well, early to mid 80s, Mattingly was an awesome, awesome baseball player. I believe he is a league leader in, in batting average, hits. Um, I don't think home runs, but I'm going to go with RBI. So he was third in doubles, fifth in batting average, fifth in RBI, seventh in slugging, and seventh in hits. Final card out of the pack is Mark McGuire. Might as well mark him as a quadruplicate. Um, McGuire um, came up in 86 as a rookie. Got a f Well, he didn't qualify for as a rookie. Got a few at-bats. 87 was his rookie year and just was phenomenal. Um, 49 bombs uh, helped bring the A's to their three consecutive years of making it to the World Series along with his fellow bash brother, Jose Canseco. McGuire in 87 was a league leader in home runs, RBI, slugging percentage, on-base percentage, um, you name it, he was a league leader in it. For, uh, first with 49 home runs, third with 118 RBI, first in slugging, eighth in game-winning RBI. Uh, the card spotlight out of this pack, uh, since I'm down to the very end, I'm going to be a little bit of a homer. I really like Vince Coleman. I can remember in 1985 when he came up as a rookie. Um, you know, you didn't have the internet back in those days, so you didn't really get a lot of information about potential prospects. Uh, I remember reading the, the Major League Baseball transactions and that they called up Vince Coleman. Uh, and then over the next two months of the season, he took Major League Baseball by storm. He'd get on base, he'd still second, he'd still third. He'd bunt, you know, for a hit, then still second and third. Essentially, it was a leadoff triple almost every time, which set the table for um, Tommy Herr, Willie McGee, Jack Clark, and really helped drive the Cardinals to the World Series in 1985. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did like it, please subscribe and share. Also, share with me in the comments what your favorite card was or what you thought was the best card in the pack. Until next time, when I'm back to crack the next pack of 1988 Tops Mini Leaders in my quest to complete set number three.